Hi everybody, this is Kevin again. Um, hope that this study will bless you. Um, as you know, we're in the uh, the week where Passover takes place on God's calendar, the Hebrew calendar. And I'm going to show it to you in just a little bit, um, some information on that, from that calendar. But first of all, I want to say this. Um, obviously, we know the Passover was the day Jesus was crucified on the cross. He, he fulfilled Passover as the Passover Lamb of God, okay? I, I covered that in the Shadows of Things to Come study just before this one, but <clears throat> I want to show you something interesting also that maybe you never have seen before. Some of you may have, but a lot of times pastors are not showing this to their, their congregations in churches today. They just focus on, you know, saying that Jesus died on Good Friday and rose from the dead on Sunday, early Sunday morning, and they celebrate Easter. Well, Easter is Ishtar. It's from Babylon, the Babylonian roots, okay, of being the Ishtar being the, the uh, queen of heaven, which was Semiramis, <clears throat> okay? And, and, you know, the whole thing with springtime and the, the bunny rabbits and the, the painting the eggs and all that kind of nonsense... All that came from way back in history, and it's all pagan, okay? But the <clears throat> but the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on Passover, that's what we concentrate on that, and also that he was in the tomb for three days and three nights, and then he rose from the dead. That's what really what we're, we're you know, recognizing and remembering, is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and then he rose from the dead three days later. So... That's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at some scriptures uh, right now. <clears throat> okay. Now, this one is very interesting because a lot of people don't realize this. They don't realize this is in the scriptures. But Matthew 12, 40 says, <clears throat> For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay. Okay. In a little bit, I'm going to show you kind of a, an illustration of this. But clearly, he says three days and three nights. Why does he say three days and three nights and not just three days? Why is that? Because, I'm, as I'm going to show you, uh, in the Bible, uh, in <clears throat> in Israel, and in Judah at the time, Judea at the time, that Jesus was there, they um, they counted the hours of the day and they counted the hours of the night. So the nighttime was, around this time of year especially, was about 12 hours, and the daytime was about 12 hours, about equal amount of time. And that's why he would say three days and three nights, which really, in all honesty, when you add it all up, is 72 hours, okay? Okay, now let's read this one. John 19, 30 through 31. <clears throat> when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. <clears throat> and he's talk, they're talking about the fact that Jesus and the two thieves were on the crosses and they had to make sure that before sunset which is when the, the day would begin. Their days started at sunset, okay? And and it says here that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. But it says there to make sure you know what they're talking about, for the Sabbath day was a high day, okay? It wasn't a weekly Sabbath. It was a high Sabbath, when do high Sabbaths happen? High Sabbaths happen on feast time frames and the feast dates. So um, that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay. Exodus 12, 16. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. That is speaking of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which follows right after Passover, okay? So, uh, when God uh, started the, the Feast of Passover, 
you know, they basically would <clears throat> um, prepare, they would kill the, the, uh, the lamb, the lamb that they had without spot and blemish, they would kill it, roast it, and eat it on that night. And then uh, the next day would actually be, um, and as I said, the, their days start at sunset. But the following day was the first day of unleavened bread, and it was it was basically observed as a Sabbath day would be. It was a high Sabbath. It could happen any time on any day of the week, depending on, you know, the, the calendar. So it would start on the 15th of the first month of Nisan. Um, the Passover was always on the 14th of Nisan. Okay. So it could happen any, you know, day of the week, but it was separate from a weekly Sabbath, which is always on Saturday. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you here in a minute from the uh, the calendar that I think is pretty accurate. It's called TorahCalendar.com. You may have seen it before, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to show you some things. First, I'm going to show you this. This is how the day and the night is divided, okay? And how that they say, you know, like the first hour of the day, it starts about 6 a.m., goes to about 6 p.m., the daytime, okay? And as you can see, there's a first hour, second hour, third hour, all the way to the 12th hour. Okay, so at the time of, well, at, like right now, it's showing it's almost about noontime right there in um, Jerusalem. It's the midday, so it's between the 6th and 7th hour. Or it's actually, yeah, it's, it's hitting, <clears throat> it's actually hitting the 6th hour right now, but basically... Um, this is how they divide the day and the night. That's what I was saying. There's 12 hours and another 12 hours, night and day. And in the nighttime, you see there's a first watch, a second watch, a third watch down there. And those are divided in, uh, in three hours increments. Okay. Now I want to show you something else. All right. Just that gives you kind of an example of the three days and three nights. And you know that, that, that adds up to 72 hours. Okay. Let me show you something else with, um, hold on a minute. Okay, <clears throat> what I did was, in trying to figure out exactly what year, because we don't really know for sure, we haven't known for sure, what year that Jesus died in. Some will say 30 AD, some will say 33, some will say 32. Anywhere probably within four years before or after uh 30 AD. What I did was I found that on 34 AD, this is 34 AD, or CE as it called, they call it now, and it's in the first month of the spiritual year. It's the first month on the calendar. Okay, so if you look at this, we go down here and you see that um, down here where uh, the 14th is, and it says Messiah crucified, Pesach, Passover, Day of Redemption, the Lamb of Elohim slain. Okay, and it says Passover right there. Okay, so that is the 14th. That's when the Passover would happen. That's when the lamb would be killed They would, and the, the meat would be eaten. Plus, uh, they would eat unleavened bread with bitter herbs. Okay, and then they would continue to eat uh, unleavened bread with bitter herbs for another seven days after that, starting on the 15th. Unleavened bread, that's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That 15th day is when that would be treated as a Sabbath day, a high Sabbath, and so would the uh, 21st, okay? The 21st is also a high Sabbath. You see that the Sabbaths are, are in the dark blue, okay? There's weekly Sabbaths, then there's the high Sabbaths, okay? So, <clears throat> and looking at this, the way I determined this is that basically in order for there to be 72 hours that Jesus was in the tomb before he rose on, rose from the dead after his crucifixion, that he had to have been crucified on Wednesday. Now, as you can see up here at the top, up here where 14th lines up, it's the fourth day. Tuesday sunset until Wednesday sunset. And you have to remember, you got to go from sunset to sunset, not midnight. That's when their day begins. That's how God designed it. 
their day would begin at sunset. So it would be an evening and then a day, an evening and morning. Okay, so basically at uh, during the day on Wednesday was when Jesus was on the cross during the day. And then by sunset, the next day was going to start. Remember, the high Sabbath was going to start. And so it would start at sunset on Wednesday and go to Thursday sunset. Okay? But that's why they had to get them off the cross and get them in the tomb. And they couldn't have bodies on the cross during the high Sabbath. What uh, the Catholic Church and, and these other churches have made a mistake in doing is thinking that that because it said Sabbath, that it was talking about Saturday, the weekly Sabbath. And that way, that would mean that he must have been crucified on Friday. And that's why they have the Good Friday observations, okay? The problem with the Good Friday is that you wouldn't have enough time, enough hours, for Jesus to be in the tomb before he rose from the dead. And I'm going to show you this. Okay, if you look down here, if you go from the 15th and you go... Basically, that's a, that's a night <clears throat> at sunset, night and day on the 15th, night and day on the 16th, night and day on the 17th, okay, which is from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, and then you get to the 18th, okay, which is uh, the first day of the week at Sunday, okay. When you get to that day, that's when... Martha and Mary found went to the tomb, and they found that the tomb was uh, empty, and Jesus had already risen. He was he was way out of the tomb, way before they got there, and they got there before the sun came up. Okay, so <clears throat> that gives us enough time. That gives us seventy two hours between the fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth. Seventy two hours of time for Jesus to be in the heart of the earth as he said he would be for three days and three nights. Okay. If he had been crucified on Friday, okay, that would be on the sixth day up there. See, that would have been on the 16th, okay? <clears throat> so that gives us not enough time because it would be a, a night, a day, and another, uh, let's see, another night, but not all the day. That wouldn't give us enough time. That would only give us about 36 hours, Okay. Some people will say, well, it just means Friday, Saturday, Sunday inclusive. Well, no, he said three days and three nights. And he said it for a reason. So anyway, um, that's what I wanted to show you, okay? And um, I'm going to go back to my presentation now. I just want to show you that's when I believe that Jesus was crucified and resurrected. Okay. I want to show you this, and I'm going to put this link in the description box for this uh, website. This is very good. It says here, if Jesus rose exactly three days and three nights after his burial, just before sunset, see Matthew 24, uh, 7, 46, Mark 15, 34, the only candidate for his resurrection is the very end of the Sabbath at sunset. Counting back three full days, then Jesus must have died on the previous Wednesday, which would have been the day of Passover. Jesus and his disciples had observed the Passover uh, the evening before. The first day of unleavened bread began just minutes after Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus sealed his tomb. The gospel account says that after this, his disciples and the women kept the holy day on Thursday, Mark 16, 1. On Friday, the preparation day for the weekly Sabbath, the women prepared spices for his embalming. This was a normal work day. See Luke 23, 56 then kept the weekly Sabbath. When they came to the tomb early Sunday morning, he had already risen sometime before. He rose exactly three days and three nights from his interment, a full 72 hours, at sunset as the weekly Sabbath ended. This shows that there were two Sabbaths, a high day and a weekly Sabbath during the time of his burial, not one. That is a very good uh, observation. I kind of showed you that on the calendar. There was the weekly Sabbath on Saturday while he was in the tomb. But there was also the high Sabbath, okay, that happened on Thursday. All right, so 
I hope that you uh, were blessed by this, and I hope it uh, helps you understand the significance of Passover and also of the day when he rose from the dead three days and three days and three nights later, and he fulfilled the feast of first fruits because he was the first fruits of the resurrection. And that's all I have for you today. God bless you all.